Um, it is actually uh, the whole European continent at the moment. And uh, if we look at the policy and uh, strategy of development of the European Union, it is first of all so-called so so um, extensive integration. It means actually the uh, accession of new member states after some time. Uh, last one it was uh, Croatia, but uh, there are some plans that uh, just a minute. Oops. There are some plans that uh, these countries uh, in the near future will become uh, the status of uh, the EU member states. If you look at uh, these countries, it is uh, actually uh, largely the uh, former Republic of uh, Yugoslavian Federation. At the moment, uh, for instance, the um, talks and negotiations with uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro are underway, and probably in uh, three or four or five uh, years, uh, these countries uh, will become the member states of the European Union. Uh, well, uh, uh, if you look at uh, well the population, uh, I, I have already said actually that the most populated uh, country within the European Union is Germany. But uh, at the moment uh, there are some shifts uh, due to the demographic processes and situation in different uh, European countries. What actually uh, uh, what actually uh, the uh, dynamic of the population concerns. For instance, uh, if you look at the situation in uh, uh, countries in East, uh, and, uh, Eastern Europe and Central Europe, uh, there is some trend that uh, the populace of uh, such countries like uh, Latvia, Estonia or Lithuania, uh, they tend to uh, go to the other member states of the European Union. For instance, uh, if we look at uh, uh, Lithuania, it is uh, what, at the moment one of the major maj uh, national majorities, uh, minorities, I'm sorry, uh, in such countries like uh, United Kingdom, uh, first of all, uh, United Kingdom and so on. So, uh, this uh, inner migration within the European Union is uh, stipulated by the economic reasons, uh, first of all. It means actually that uh, the uh, inhabitants and uh, citizens of uh, uh, different countries which are not good in economic development uh, tend to uh, migrate to the countries in the European Union uh, which are more rich, uh, which are uh, richer than uh, these countries and uh, which can uh, promote a uh, good, uh, uh, good level of social and economic development. Yes, and um, uh, if we look at uh, the uh, distribution of uh, uh, gross domestic product within the European Union, uh, uh, and here we're talking about actually uh, also um, the member states of the European Union, uh, the most uh, um, the most prosperous one and the richest country within the European Union is at the moment Luxembourg. Uh, Luxembourg is uh, uh, the most prosperous, what actually the gross domestic product per capita, is, it means actually per inhibitant of European Union concerns. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, if we look at uh, this, uh, this dynamic and uh, this graph, I would say that uh, the prosperity among uh, the member states of the European Union is not equal. And it means actually that uh, there are some countries, first of all, uh, Central and Eastern Europe, uh, which have some uh, uh, economic problems and uh, with the development. That's why actually it is also one of the reasons uh, why uh, European Union tried to uh, financially support this uh, Central and East European countries. Yes. Uh, what about the size of the economic uh, economics? Uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, European Union at the moment is uh, on the first place. It is, this is the com combined uh, aggregator of uh, all the national uh, economies within the European Union, uh, and the combined GDP is the moment uh, at the moment is uh, the biggest in the world. 
So it means actually that uh, the combined econ uh, economy of European Union is uh, bigger than the economy of the United States. And uh, wealth per person, this is also GDP per person in uh, 2013. Uh, I would say actually that the uh, United States at the moment, uh, due to the, uh, due to the uh, not so huge population in comparison with the European Union, uh, the distribution of uh, GDP per person in the United States is much more uh, uh, much, much more um, not, not equal, I, I would say, but it, is, uh, it has actually that uh, according to the uh, scale of the uh, US economy and the population of in the United States, the distribution of uh, the GDP is, uh, shows that uh, every inhabitant of the United States accounts about uh, uh, 40 thousands of dollars in comparison with 26 uh, and a half uh, thousands of dollars within the European Union. Uh, the discrepancy is due to uh, the fact that the combined population of the European Union is about uh, 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 is bigger than the United States. Uh, I, I have already said that the combined population of the European Union is about uh, uh, half of the half, half of billion of uh, citizens, and uh, if we look at the situation of, in the United States, it's about. 2,500, uh, I, I would say, inhabitants. So uh, this is the point why uh, actually GDP per capita in the uh, United States is bigger than uh, within, the United, uh, within the European Union. Here um, is uh, the portraits of uh, the founding fathers of the European Union. Uh, one of them is uh, the former Prime Minister of uh, uh, Great Britain, Winston Churchill. And is also the German Chancellor uh, Konrad Adenauer, and also uh, the French uh, people. Here's uh, the uh, Robert Schuman, Jean, Jean Monnet, uh, who are actually uh, the first uh, person who expressed the idea of creating the Union, uh, the European Union, uh, in order to uh, avoid uh, avoid uh, the risks and uh, the avoid uh, the situation that uh, the new war within Europe uh, will br uh, break up. Uh, Europe has uh, the experience of two uh, world wars and uh, uh, all these two uh, world wars were devastating for Europe and the creation of the European Union as integration structure uh, uh, it, uh, when it was the idea of creating the economic union, it uh, will be some kind of deterrent, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, factor which uh, uh, which uh, mi which minimizes actually uh, the probability of the new war uh, within the European Union. So it's uh, the combination and uh, some union of European uh, countries on the economic basis. Uh, which uh, bring them closer and which make actually the uh, warfare uh, less obvious and less pro not so uh, the proximity of the new war uh, with the creation of this economic union will be much more which, which will, will be smaller than it, it was um, at the beginning of the 20th century. So here's uh, some information about uh, European Union uh, just a short video about how it goes uh, at the moment. I don't know whether it functions or not. I hope so. Oh, come on. Not this one. Okay. So, um, here's uh, actually this map shows uh, the dynamic of integration within uh, 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 within Europe and uh, of the enlargement of the European Union's integration structure. Uh, so uh, there are several ways uh, and se uh, several waves of so-called integration within the European Union. Um, I personally single out uh, four major waves of uh, uh, European integration. The first one, uh, it was actually from uh, the uh, founding of the first integration structure. It is actually uh, 
the union of coal and steel, so-called Mantan uni uh, Union. Uh, it was um, actually uh, six major, uh, six ma major and uh, founding uh, countries within the European Union: uh, Belgium, Fra uh, France, uh, West Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg, which were uh, the creators of not only uh, this Mantan Union but uh, the cre uh, creators of European uh, Economic Community, uh, which uh, later became. Uh, uh, European Economic Union. Uh, the second wave, it will, uh, it was uh, 70s and 80s of the 20th century. It was the accession of such countries like uh, United Kingdom, Denmark, uh, Greece, Spain, Portugal. Uh, uh, well, the accession of these countries uh, was due to the democratization process within uh, these countries. For instance, it was uh, uh, it was relevant for Greece. Spain and Portugal, which had actually uh, the military regimes, uh, authoritarian regimes, and uh, in the 70s there was some uh, democratization process within these countries. Uh, the third wave uh, it was uh, 80s and 90s with the accession of uh, such countries like Sweden, uh, Finland, uh, uh, Austria, Ireland, and uh, the Fourth and the major wave, uh, if we look at actually at the number of the uh, new member states, it was uh, the beginning of the uh, 21st century, 2004-2013, uh, uh, the accession of uh, third uh, uh, nation state uh, and uh, the enlargement of the European Union to the current uh, scale.